Right now is 10.47 p.m. Oh, man, I'm keeping you up late tonight, but um, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. You're, you, with the tools that you've built and everything that you've seen uh, in e-commerce, I know that you have just a vast experience in, in kind of, you know, whether it's positioning, messaging, what we should test, how we should get answers from our customers, and kind of stemming off of the last session even, and just like how to figure out what's wrong with this page in, in a way is how you could say, you know, what's wrong with our, our site? What's wrong with our page and, and how to fix it. But um, I'll let you just show, show us customer value optimi uh, yeah, optimization and experience as a whole. Perfect. So uh, thanks a lot for uh, staying that late if you are from Europe and uh, hello everyone if you are from the US and thanks again, uh, Derek. Uh, I will uh, share my screen with you let me know if you can uh, if you can see it. Yes, and I'm sharing a link to OmniConvert here in chat for anyone curious about your tools. Perfect. So that's great. Let's rock and roll. How to nail customer value optimization? So uh, let me also do this as well. Here. Yeah. So the context you all know. The e-commerce is booming in the last uh, in in eight weeks. We the e-commerce industry has. Uh, uh, almost uh, doubled, right? So in the, the in eight weeks, they've made uh, they've made this analysis uh, ba based on the research from Bank of America, then that uh, reveals the fact that uh, the growth in eight weeks is according to five years of projections. So let me let me give you a glimpse about how to make e-commerce grow even further, because now that you have some new customers, you have to keep them. So my initial understanding about the growth e-commerce formula was that you need traffic, you need conversion rate, and you need the average order value, and that will mean uh, growth. But I've uh, I figured it out after reading a lot of books and after stumbling upon this guy Jay Abraham that there are only three ways to grow any kind of business. So he stated that you need to increase the number of clients, you need to increase the average transaction per customer, and you need to get each customer to buy from you more often. So I've updated the formula, right? So my e-commerce formula, the second version, and is a, is a third one as well, was that you need customers. That means traffic or uh, multiplied by the conversion rate, but you also need every order value and you need orders per customer, everything divided by the customer acquisition cost that needs to, that is influenced by the return on advertising spend and of course other, uh, other media costs. And I thought at that time that that is growth. Uh, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur for 20 years already and I've uh, been doing this uh, rodeo over and over again but I still find a lot of aspects that need to be improved. So my last uh, company was an e-commerce. I've made the exit after uh, reaching 200,000 customers. And I realized that I need to build software to help other entrepreneurs like, uh, like myself. So after working with a lot of other entrepreneurs, I've realized that the second version needs to be updated as well. So you need customers, but you also need a customer lifetime value and you need the customer acquisition cost to divide it. So mainly is this ratio between the customer lifetime value and customer acquisition cost, which is making or breaking uh, an e-commerce. And if you will need to do the, an exit, and if you're a shop owner, you need to understand that this ratio is the one that matters, but customer lifetime value is influenced, influenced as well by the margin, by the RFM, score and we're going to talk a bit about uh, this a bit later and it's also affected by customer experience which means what kind of conversations you have with your customers listening to their voice monitoring things like net promoter score or customer effort score and then further monitoring things like how they feel about it, uh, the relation you have with them because as a newcomer or as a small or mid-sized player, you need to take into account that the relation is what matters, is not the product themselves, because you, you have a lot of products that you could sell. So if you are not, uh, let's say, lucky enough to have a DNVB, 
and you you are not producing your own, your own uh, goods then that means you need to rely on the same products that everyone is uh, is uh, selling so that means the relation itself and the customer experience is the one that it's affecting the customer lifetime value so that being said let's focus on what kind of levers you have to, uh, you you have available to grow your uh, e-commerce so you have the traffic but as you could see here in this data from Wordstream and Facebook uh, advertising uh, is way too expensive to acquire new customers right now. So acquiring customers is eight times more expensive than it used to be five times, five, uh, five years be, uh, be, uh, uh, before, but the e-commerce sales worldwide has uh, increased only 1.5 times, which means solely focusing on acquiring customers is not making the cut anymore. Another important lever would be the conversions. So to be able to properly increase the conversion rate, the online retailers need three things, to know their customers, to know why they buy, the reasons and barriers behind their, uh, the purchase mechanism, and what to sell, find the products that keep customers buying, which means to focus on the existing customers so that they can acquire more customers. So. That being said, how to improve customer lifetime value? I prepare for you our, let's say, proven methodology because we've worked with uh, a lot of companies, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, e-commerce companies from various verticals. So these are the seven steps, right? First, monitor customer lifetime value and the KPIs that are affecting it. We're going to speak about it a bit later. Change the way the com your company defines success. So make everyone aware about the importance of customer lifetime value, which is not a marketing KPI, but a company-wide measure of success. Then find your ideal customers by doing RFM segmentation and, and uh, analysis. Then optimize the customer journey map right? So do the customer journey mapping and then improve customer experience to ICPs uh, in order to make them feel well and become promoters of your e-commerce. Then find the toxic products, their buying habits and uh, the anomalies so that you can optimize the product assortment. So to uh, push the product, the products which are bringing you the most loyal customers, right? Then shift the customer acquisition focus towards the ICPs. What if, what if you could inform Facebook with a lookalike audience based on your ICPs, not your average customers? What, what it would happen at that time, right? And then the seventh step would be to orchestrate uh, an ongoing uh, uh, personalization campaign across all the channels by uh, email, ads, and websites according to the customer value, right? So for each customer, according to the relation they have with you, imagine mixing things like NPS. So you have a pissed off customer, which is also a valuable customer, right? So one of your, uh, how do, how we call them here, uh, soulmates, the best customers you have. So First step, monitor customer lifetime value and the main KPIs. So in order for you to understand the customer lifetime value impact, you might want to take into account the impact of customer retention, right? This is the first step. And we have this nice calculator here, it's completely free, so you can play around with, uh, with this data. The problem with customer retention is that it's not that easy to capture. It's not that easy to capture lifetime value as well on, on Shopify or on BigCommerce or on Magento as well. So no matter the platform you have, this kind of retail analytics are not that easy to find because Google Analytics gives you a ton of data of before the first purchase when the customers are buying your marketing, not your product. And then you don't hear any more about those customers. So there aren't too many ways to, to, to capture this data. And that's why we, we step into the picture. In order to, gen, to, to monitor the, the best KPIs that improve growth, you need to understand this thing. Growth doesn't mean is, is different than the growth generating factors, which means if you are, uh, let's say, obsessed about uh, checking revenue or margin every day, checking traffic every day, 
it's not going to move the needle for you. So the growth generating factors are different than what growth means. So if you guide yourself only by the by P and L, you can end up like these guys, right? So uh, these are uh, this is an e-commerce. It used to be an e-commerce. It, it's called B Fashion. It's from uh, from. Uh, Central and Eastern Europe. So they had uh, 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 a fantastic growth year over year of 150% three years in a row. So they got to 11 million in annual revenue. On 11 countries, they've expanded a lot. They've uh, got funded and so on. So what happened when I uh, met the, the, the shop owners, their sy symptoms were, were like this. So the year over year lifetime value was minus 20 percent the nps was less than 40 and this ratio of customer lifetime value versus uh, customer acquisition cost was less than 1.5 so it was varying while the retention rate was uh, less than 20 percent so based on these symptoms they haven't realized that they were suffering so much so back uh, one year before so four years after after uh, that they ran out of business. So I, I was actually checking their website right now and they are completely, completely gone. So 20% less revenue. They were in just one country with less than 10 employees. Why that happened? Because in the p and the revenue was skyrocketing, but under the radar, so uh, what, what was consuming the business was the fact that the customers weren't happy with the products they've sold. So they've eventually ran out of run out of business, and that was actually the first uh, story that made me understand how big the problem of customer lifetime value optimization is, and that convinced me to uh, pivot the whole company towards building a product around customer value optimization. One important KPI to, to measure here are, is this. The, so the chances to place the next order. After the first order, let's say, those can be 20. After the second order, 25. After the third order, it can be 30. But there is some point, right? And this is different according to your industry, to what you're selling, or to how, how your customer experience is, how pleasant your relationships with your customers are this might be different, right? So you need to check your own metrics here. What is clear is that after the third order, the chances to place the next one uh, are, are pretty high. So this is a pattern everywhere. So we are seeing this data because we have uh, already more than 100 uh, shops which are uh, using our software. We, we are about to launch this uh, officially and we are seeing this pattern everywhere. In the first free order, you have to nurture your customers differently. You have to uh, make them uh, buy again from you by installing the habit. So that means your efforts should be higher here and lower here because once the customer buys from you every now and then, then that means your customer acquisition is gone and that means they are uh, acquainted with how you sell the uh, your products. The second step after you monitor all these things, which are different, there are a lot of stuff that you can monitor. The second step would be the RFM segmentation. And I'm glad that the, the, the previous speaker uh, touched the importance of RFM. I'm going to dig a, a little deeper into RFM analysis. So after 30% of the revenue is being generated by returning customers, you have to do RFM segmentation. So it's not an option anymore. Either RFM, either uh, another way to segment your customers according to how active they are and according to how valuable they are. So RFM stands for recency, frequency, and monetary value. So how recently did the customer purchase? How often do they purchase? And how much do they spend? So that means this is allowing you to group them into different uh, groups, right? So you have the true lovers, you have the platonic friends, you have the about to dump your customers. And these are groups that are important. And uh, you, you, this will allow you to understand which are your ideal customers. So in this case, the ideal customers are the ones that have the highest score in recency, in frequency and in monetary value, right? So they have uh, the, as you can see here, the average revenue per customer is 2.8 thousand US dollars. And the next uh, uh, most uh, important group in this case have only $753. While the average customer, you can't see the, this be, because it's a, it's a long web page, but the average customer has something like $80. So that means one soulmate 
is as valuable as 30 customers, 30 average customers in this case. So you have the true lovers. These are the customers that bought most recently, most often, and so they have the biggest monetary values. These are your ideal customers. Then you have the ex-lovers, which are a, a, a hugely important group right? I might say that these are the most important because these are giving you the, it's hard to re-engage them again, but it's easy to actually find out what, which, what made them stop buying from you. So these are one, five, five. They have the lowest score in recency. So the, let's say they've, they've bought like two, three years before they have five uh, in frequency. So they've bought a lot of times and they have five in monetary value. So they have the highest monetary uh, uh, investment in products that you've sold. So that means you, you must understand them. So that mean, means you must do something to sparkle conversation with them. And this is something that you could do in the next, uh, next step in our methodology. Another interesting group are the Don Juans, right? So not every e-commerce has too many of those, but these are interesting enough to do some research to understand because these, these uh, have a very high potential. They've placed only one order a lot of time before now, but they, they have a high, uh, they, they've spent a lot on your uh, shop. So that means you must understand what made them stop buying from you because do, those could have uh, generated a lot of revenue for you. So once you have all this data, you have all these groups here, right? So in this case, this, uh, this, uh, this shop has only nine groups of RFM, right? So they have the soulmates, the, the, the ones which are the most profitable. And you could see here, uh, this is actually a snapshot from Reveal. You could see here uh, how many they are, like 3% of the soulmates are generating 12% uh, of the total uh, margin and 11% uh, of the total revenue. While you also have the about to dump you and so on. So this is varying from uh, one e-commerce to another. Fact is that, fact is that it makes, makes the shop owners understand the impact in terms of margin of the new customers and allows them to understand where they should be focusing next. If we look at the next step in our methodology is the ideal customer profile. So what is, what is ICP? Means that once you understand which are your best customers, you, you dig deeper. Right, So you do the qualitative research, which means allowing you to understand which are the reasons to buy and the barriers in relation to the products and the services. There can be only two problems, right? Either with the products, either with the services. And you always need to monitor the first three uh, problems that your customers have. What, which are, if, if most of the problems are with the services, that means you need to understand what kind of services, what kind of aspects you must, uh, you must improve, either the delivery cost, the return policies, the delivery time, whatever. It's either on the other hand, the products that you're selling are not that appealing. So the, there's an there's a expectation gap. You are promising on your website more than the products are delivering. And this can be, uh, we, we've got some uh, uh, nice experiences that uh, made us and the e-commerce shop owners understand that it wasn't the product, but it was the packaging itself because the unpacking experience was so hard because they have that scotch tape and it was really hard to, to actually get the goods out of the box. So these are a lot of valuable insights that you might have. So one alternative would be to focus continuously on acquiring more customers our alternative would be to, uh, and our suggestion would be to simply stop and do this research. This is one of the most eye-opening research and actions that you could have uh, that has the, the, the best leverage. Uh, another important aspect here would be to, to understand your cohorts, right? So uh, cohort analysis reveals you what kind of second month stickiness rate you have. So which are the campaigns, which are the months that delivered you the best uh, stick, the, the most sticky customers, which means this drop from the first uh, purchase and then the second and the first. So you could see that how this is diminishing. But in some cases, this is almost flat. For instance, we, we've seen some uh, companies in the, uh, in the food industry right now, which in the last three months, they have a lot of uh, traction. So the customers are sticking with, uh, with them. Another important aspect here at the ICP is to, to do the buying patterns, right? So to understand 
what kind of uh, states or locations or categories are delivering the uh, delivering you the most uh, true lovers right so the incidence to to have a true lover is higher in this city so that means if you focus your advertising you could actually adjust your budget accordingly so that's how you'll be able to understand where to focus your uh, acquisition efforts so moving further the uh, standard e-commerce customer journey so the the customer journey mapping means understanding what kind of touch points you have with your customers so you have the demand generation the order is being placed then you send the, the automatic order confirmation and then the order is delivered you bombard your customers with the ads and campaigns and emails uh, to, with discounts and maybe some of the customers will place the second order. So this is the standard e-commerce journey. The advanced one, we are suggesting here to introduce three steps. Like the first one, after the order is being delivered to introduce the customer satisfaction surveys or at the NPS. So mainly to talk with your customers, to understand what's their reaction towards the whole experience that you've proposed them and then to treat those objections in real time in case they appear so one option would be to simply grab the nps and leave it there and then revisit it every quarter or so the other option would be and if you are interested i uh, I, I suggest to connect with me on linkedin and i can give you uh, our proven blueprint to treat the objections based on the the uh, the NPS score and the RFM score as well. So then the, the next step would be to enroll the customer in a customer retention program and then to do personalized ad email and web experiences based on that. So that could improve your customer retention to an average of 50% according to your vertical. In some industries, it is even 70%. The next step would be to to based on your ICP and based on all these insights to do better ads. So to target uh, the right customers at the right time with the right message, because we've understood this from your previous research customers, then to improve the assortment and merchandising based on what the RFM groups are buying to optimize the inventory. So uh, to stock lower on, uh, on less popular products and then to do to provide better customer service. We are in process right now to, to uh, integrate with Gorgias, for instance, and provide you the capacity to improve the customer experience based on the RFM segment. So to prioritize uh, the best customers and to tailor the messages according to how valuable they are to your, uh, to your um company then you'll be able to find out all these things like what's the nps score of a certain customer what's the rfn group what's the total revenue what's the margin which are the touch points so far and what is the date of birth so that means you'll be able to reveal all, all this uh, data because the the most important aspect i think is that few companies understand this graph right so this uh, uh this data most of the customers that are leaving a company are not leaving it be, be because of the competition, but because of the fact that they they feel and they believe that they don't you don't care about them. So that's a, a mind blowing metric, and you should be understanding that it's all about customer experience because we are in the customer experience economy. So. Next step would be to monitor and segment NPS. So instead of looking at the NPS as an average, you could look at the NPS based on each RFM group. So for the about to dump you, for the lovers and so on, so that you'll be understanding what is the trend and take action in real time based on the RFM group, based on the product category, based on the brand that you are selling. And in, in this manner, understand how this uh, data like the retention curve and like the average retention rate and the chances to place the next order are being affected by the NPS because you could correlate this uh, this data and focus on the factors that are generating uh, growth. The next step after this, uh, you had all this data, you come up with the insights, you brainstorm with your team and you come up with a customer intention and, uh, and loyalty program. So mainly after that, this will allow you to reward the customers and to provide the, uh, the best treatment to each customer according to how valuable they are. So 
mainly that that's how personalization works. So we are in this industry for a lot of years and we've understood that personalization works only if it is relevant. So the customers don't care about who you are and what, uh, how many uh, Fahrenheit degrees are outside or uh, if they are coming from Facebook or not. So, but what they are caring is if you care about them and if you can fulfill the needs or if you can diminish their, uh, their pains. Right? So that's how you can craft uh, a personalization program based on how they feel about you and how they feel about the products that, uh, that you, are being, you are selling. So to wrap up, this, this is our customer value optimization strategy. Get your customer acquisition cost and understand it. Segment, it, segment your customers according to RFMs to, to understand which are the most valuable customers, then do the qualitative research and get more insights and uh, understand the reasons and the free buying frictions they have so that you can craft your ICP and focus on who matter. Then understand the buying pro- patterns in terms of products or brands and understand anomalies based on some cities. Maybe you have a higher density of ICPs in a certain region or country or state. Then with those insights, improve the ad spending, which means lower customer acquisition cost, improve the email orchestration campaigns. For instance, we are integrated with Clavio and we empower our merchants to orchestrate these emails automatically. So to have evergreen campaigns that prevents customers from churning instead of uh, bribing them with discounts to come back. Then improve the website. That means ongoing uh, research so that you can craft you can understand what's going on with them, what's, uh, how, how pleased they are with your whole experience. Then craft a customer retention strategy at each level, provide the, the, the right treatment at the right time to the right customer, and then do this ongoing personalization across all channels like SMS, web apps, email, ad campaigns, uh, or direct mailing. So uh, you, you can be able to do a lot of those things uh, by using our, our product. What we empower our merch- merchants to do is all these things like customer segmentation, customer health score, customer retention, and uh, understand the buying patterns so that they can do personalization on ads, email, and, uh, and via website. The best thing around uh, about us is that at, at this moment, you are one of the lucky uh, uh, first ones to... to, to meet with the reveal. So if you are running on Shopify, you can get it for free until the end of 2020. You can, you simply go to Shopify app store. It's completely free. We can even help you out more because we are caring about our early adopters as we are seeing this discipline and this uh, uh, industry of customer value optimization crystallizing more and more. So uh, that was all from, uh, from my end. Uh, thank you. If you have any kind of questions, I'm uh, open to connect with you via LinkedIn. That is my uh, LinkedIn account. And uh, thanks a lot. Derek, over to, over to you. I don't know if uh, we can get any, any questions. Awesome. We are already out of time, but I really love that presentation. I took so many screenshots from, uh, <laughs> from that presentation. It's like every slide was like screenshot worthy. And the way that you, um, I mean, showcase the power of, of, of Reveal is amazing. And the fact that it's free till the end of the year means like, let's get on this and let's, uh, let, let's make sure that we're understanding uh, qualitatively and quantitatively everything about our customers. I also love those customer profiles you're talking about. That's actually a perfect follow-up to what, uh, what Ahmad was talking about in the previous session yeah. about the RFM model. So 